Hey guys, Proper English here. So I've been thinking about how I should go about teaching you guys the fundamentals of Redstone, you know, the real basics. And I've decided that the best way I can do this is to teach you the way I learned them. And so when I started learning Redstone, I didn't go out and try to learn all the gates and the flip-flops and the latches all in one day. Instead, I would try to build different creations. You know, I had ideas, and I'm sure you guys have ideas. So I'd start building... Uh, trying to build one of these creations and when I needed to learn something new I would go look it up and by doing that I think I got a better appreciation for what you know these fundamentals were what these different um, you know these different circuits that I was using uh, were actually doing because I wasn't just uh, just sort of memorizing them I was taking them and applying them in uh, in a build so I it, it gave them a bit more meaning and I think that's a good way to learn because you'll understand them better. And that's my goal for this series. I'm calling it my need to know series because, uh, well, there are two reasons. First of all, I'm going to be going into the real basics, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals that you need to know if you're going to be playing with redstone. Uh, these are things that are invaluable to have in your toolbox because even if you're not using them all the time, they'll give you new ideas and they're will definitely come a time when you know, you're trying to figure out some circuit and you're like, oh, yeah, I can use that. And, uh, and yeah, so these are, you know, you really should understand the, the, the fundamentals because it's what everything else is based on. And so, uh, so that's one reason I'm calling it the Need to Know series. The other reason is because I'm going to be releasing Need to Know videos alongside other tutorials. So for example, today I'm releasing a tutorial on binary counters and so I'm releasing a need to know video that talks about AND gates and T flip flops because those are the two uh, two components that you're going to need to know to build a binary counter and you can use them for plenty of other things you'll need to know these things for future tutorials but um, but yeah so you'll learn these two uh, two concepts AND gates and T flip flops and then you can watch the other video and you'll see how you can apply these things and you know build something that's kinda neat so, uh, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to start off by, uh, by teaching you what an AND gate is and, and how it works. So the first question to ask when talking about an AND gate is, what is an AND gate? And we'll answer this question by taking a look at the truth table. So in the truth table, we've got three values. We've got an A input, a B input, and an output and the output is dependent on both the A and the B inputs. And in an AND gate, the only time that the output is going to be on is when both A and B are on. So let's take a look at the whole thing. So in the first row, we can see that A is off, B is off, and the output is off. In the second row, A is off, B is on, and the output is off. Now in the third row, a is on, B is on, the output is off. And finally, when A and B are both on, the output is on. So that's pretty easy to remember. A and B, if they're both on, the output is on. So let's take a look at how you might build an AND gate in Redstone. And we'll start off with a very uh, simple AND gate. I'm sure many of you have seen this design before. It's, uh, it's a good one to learn how, how AND gates function. So let's take a look at this. In this AND gate, we've got these two torches up here powering this wire, which powers this block and turns this torch off. So this is the output torch. If we turn one of these inputs on, we can see that the output is still off. We can turn the other one on, the output's off. And now if both are on, the output's on. So let's take a look at how that works. Well, when I power one of these inputs, it powers one of these torches, okay? And these torches are the ones that are keeping the output torch off. If we power both of the torches, well, this wire is no longer powered, so the output torch can turn on and give an output. And that's the basic uh, concept behind an AND gate. Now, we can also apply an AND gate in, uh, in pistons and do some piston logic. So, let's take a look at that. Right now, both inputs are off, the output's off. If one's on, still off. The other's on, still off. Now when they're both on, the output's on. 
And if we get creative over here, we can make a fancy uh, type of an AND gate where on one of the inputs, it's actually instant. So let's take a look at that. If the piston input is on, and I turn the wire input on, now it goes through without any delay. And that is going to be the major concept behind this over here, and this is what we call a carry line. It's basically a bunch of AND gates lined up. And I've got them all on right now, which I guess I'll leave them on. But uh, so right now, one input to each of these AND gates is on. If we turn this other input on, we can see that the output changes simultaneously. It all changes at once, and that allows us to do some fancy things in binary counters and in adders. And uh, I'll be showing you how to use this in a binary counter today in my other video. So let's take a look at one more thing that you might find useful. An AND gate, uh, does, you, know, you don't have to limit this to, uh, to two inputs. Let's build a three input AND gate and I'll show you how to do that. So this is, you know, I'm just throwing this design together. There's much better ways to do this. But uh, if I throw some wire up here, toss a couple of inputs on the back. Oop. There we go. And let's create an output. We'll do the same thing with that torch there. Well now, we've got three torches powering the, uh, the block that holds the output torch. So the output torch stays off unless all three of these input torches are on. So let's try that. So if we turn, we can turn two of these on and now the output's still off unless we turn the last one on. And we, if we turn any of these off, the output's gonna go off. So all three inputs have to be on. We'll call this A and B and C. If they're all on, then we get an output. And those are AND gates. It's not too bad. Um, I hope you got that. If you've got any questions, definitely ask about it. Now, let's get into T flip-flops. And once we learn AND gates and T flip-flops, you'll be ready to, uh, to check out this tutorial on binary counters, and you'll understand it perfectly. So let's go for that. In simple terms, a T flip-flop is a type of circuit that turns a button into a lever. And we can see that the button is uh, changing the state over here. But I think a more uh, detailed description of what this device actually does is a T flip-flop is a type of memory cell that toggles, okay? So every time it takes an input, and in this case the input is a pulse sent by this monostable circuit over here, it changes the state of its output. And, uh, and so let's look at how that happens. So I just mentioned something called a monostable circuit. And what this type of circuit does is it takes an input and it briefly changes the output. So it creates a pulse. So if you watch it, you can see, oh, couldn't even see it there. It's a fast pulse. There you go. Let me, uh, actually, let me set up some repeaters here so you can actually see what's going on. We'll make them four ticks so it's nice and long. All right. So let's take a look at it now. And you can see it sends a pulse. All right, and so this T flip-flop relies on the fact that a sticky piston will drop its block if it receives a pulse of one tick or less. So let's take a look. Fast pulse drops its block. And there you go, that's a T flip-flop. And, uh, and yeah, it's a really good one. This is the one that I'll be using in the binary counter uh, the, in the other video that I'm uh, releasing today. All right, so now you understand what an AND gate is, how to build one. You understand what a T flip-flop is and how to build one. So let's take both of these and build a, uh, a binary counter.